Gracias, señor Medina. So seven years ago, I don't know how many of you know the history of the center, but just briefly, I'm going to tell you. I was a secretary for the Puerto Rican Social Club of Arizona for about six years, and uh, that's all we did was social. We had parties after party after party after party because we were good at it. And we had a great board, and for all these years, I always thought, well, what about our culture? What about letting people know what we do? And um, I knew Nidia from, uh, she went to the, one of the first meetings of the social club and, and on and on the picnics and things like that. And uh, I don't know, I just, I do believe that God speaks to me sometime. And at one picnic, he told me, go to Nidia, because this is my dream. I wanted to talk more about the history of our, our people, culture, just know that we're there, put our name as, you know, all up there, and don't mind me, I love to party, but aside from partying, we wanted more. So I approached Nidia and told her what was on my mind, and Nidia looked at me, she's like, wow, I was thinking the same. And I said, I know you don't know me, and I don't know you, but what do you think if we do this? And she says, let's do it. So seven years ago, we met right here across from the hall for the first time, as a group of people, about 25 people came that day to show their support and their interest to be a part of this center. Um, little by little, people started coming to us and we started doing different activities. Picnic seems to be a, a very good thing around here. We do picnics and people like to come, share font logs, music, dancing, we do that a lot. So we did a lot of picnics, we did Christmas parties, we've done parrandas, if you miss them, let me tell you, we, we're good, we're good. We also made pasteles one time, and I mean, we met a lot of people that came to do pasteles, just, hey, they're gonna make pasteles, teach me how to do them. And that was a great time to meet, we met a lot of friends on that activity. Um, We've gone and fed the homeless at parks. We have helped families in need, and the list can go on and on and on. El Grupo Orgullo Boricua was born from the center. They play bomba and plena. They're independent, they have their own independent group, but they're still under the umbrella of the center. And they have gone to so many events and activities representing our culture. So that's a huge thing that, you know, for, for us, for our community. Uh, so throughout that, we have made a lot of amazing people and the forged strong relationships among many of us. And also, I like to say that we've become a family. We are a family of Puerto Ricans here in Arizona, and there are many people that know us and they're involved because they don't have anybody else, and they want to feel that warmth that we come. I mean, I don't know about you, but I see a Puerto Rican anywhere, I hug them and I kiss them like I've known them all my life. So. That to me is my family, and that's what my dream about the center continues to be, so that people feel welcome when they're here, that they know we get you, we know what you're lacking, we know what you're yearning, and that's what we're here for, is to feel it, make you feel that way. So we come to this assembly today to officially organize our board of directors. We've had boards of directors before, but not as formal as this, because this is the first time that we open membership to the center. Before that, it was more informal. So you guys are making history today for the center. And this is something that will be recorded for future generations. And as you can see, this process is open, transparent, clean, and it is in the best of the interest of the center. So a lot of work has come into making sure that we're following our bylaws that were established in 2007, and um, that's why we needed to have the quorum and so forth. So the agenda that lies ahead is to make the center the home of our culture and the values of Puerto Ricans, especially for those of us who live far from our land but are always present in our hearts. And you're a part of that. Today we're going to make history. The board chosen today has the assignment of taking the baton and follow the road ahead to help achieve the success of the organization. 
As founders, Nidia and I have given much of our lives to the organization, like she mentioned. Now we humbly give way to the new generation of leaders to climb that mountain. Nidia and I will always be present to do whatever is necessary for the best of PRCAC. Siempre vamos a decir presente, y yo soy mandona y voy a decir mi opinión whether I'm in the board or not. So, respect that. <laughs> So, you know, we will continue on the board if you all decided that that's what you want, or we're just gonna work alongside with the new board, however the decision that you members are gonna decide. But we will always be giving the best battle for Puerto Rico, for the Puerto Ricans in Arizona, and for our beloved center. That will never change for us. You choose the best today, and those who are elected, I encourage you to continue strong with your dream and your motivation for what drives you to be Puerto Rican or to be from another country. We have people here that loves us and they want to be a part of that from Peru, from Mexico. I mean, we are all, we recognize each other as Latinos, Hispanics, however they call us, but it is something that we carries in our heart to be that passionate about something that we believe in. So to all of you, I continue to encourage you. And likewise, for those that are not elected, I, I ask you not to be discouraged because there's a lot of work, a lot of work to be done. And there are gonna be committees and we are gonna need your help. We cannot do this with just seven people. We need every single one of you. So know that you are needed no matter what. And again, continue with the enthusiasm and commitment of the Center of Arizona and give it your full support. And as you already know, since we did not meet quorum, the process is gonna be, this is being recorded, so we are going to reach out to the members that were unable to attend today, and we're gonna ask them to watch the video so that they get to know all the candidates today, and then we'll be providing them with an electronic uh, ballot that they can also cast their votes until we meet our quorum. So we're still uh, gonna be officially presenting all the candidates today to go over um, their aspirations, their uh, motivation, their encouragement. So Mr. Medina is gonna uh, go ahead and uh, start calling the candidates. Yes, David. Can you tell us what the quorum, what's required of the quorum, what's the requirement? Yes, so we basically need 50% on the number of memberships that we have in the center. Right now we can we have 52 memberships. So we needed 26, 26 people to be here. And not per, it's one vote per family or single or whatever. So there's more obviously than 26 here, but we only have, was that 21, 22 that actually, well we needed 26, but we only made it, I think we needed four more. So we have 21. 21 memberships that are present today. So that's why we cannot continue. And this is the bylaws. Now, for next year, we have some ideas on how to uh, update the bylaws so that we don't have to run into this kind of things. But for this year, those are the bylaws that are registered, and those are the ones we have to go by. 